Yes, guys. So normally when we see reporting process, we have a lot of ratios when we talk about. A few very interesting ratios are return on investment, return on fixed assets, or return on total assets. These are few interesting ratios. I call them as interesting because understand one simple thing. Let's say we are a software company. What is my return on fixed assets? How do you calculate? Now what is the fixed asset which I have? The fixed asset which I have is table, chair, one computer. Now what is the revenue that I generate? My revenue generation is not based on the table or the laptop or the chair. Right? So my revenue is completely based on the human resource. You take any sector where the skill being used, where a skill of a human resource is being used, these ratios will not hold good at all. I can't calculate return on investment for a software segment or return on fixed asset for a software industry or return on total asset for a software industry. Not possible. They are irrelevant ratios when, it, when you consider any business which is into, which is using a human skill. Now you can call anything as a human skill, architecture and any lawyers. Yes, any group of chartered accountants, group of company secretaries, any group of people who are using their skill, I cannot calculate this resource, you know, this ratios because a major asset is your human resource. Now, when we're talking about the human resource, then how else do we represent it? Now, do I record a human resource? Is human resource an asset? Yes. When you actually consider this software segments, then human resources are basically assets. Now, someone who is into a service industry, to that person, the major asset is his human resource. But do I report a human resource in the financial statements? No. Why? Because of money measurement concept. Because there comes in something called as money measurement. Let's say I have three people in the organization X, Y and Z. What is the value of X? What is the value of Y? What is the value of Z? I'm not doing a human trafficking business to put a value to a person. So how do I do it? Now, where do I show an asset? First of all, is there any transaction? Okay, TK, let's, let's say X came to an interview. You said X, you are hired. Did I buy X? No, did I buy X? I did not buy X. How can I show him as an asset? There's no transaction which happened. I did not pay him 10 crores and I said, you are my property now. That is not possible. So when I'm talking about a human resource, I can't start treating a man as, as an asset at all. I am only leasing out his services for a particular payment which we normally call it as a salary or a wage. Now, in such cases, human resource cannot be reported in the financial statements at all. It is not reported in financial statements. Okay, let's say we can we started comparing two companies, Infosys and TCS. On what basis we will compare? Let's say past profits, past performance, that this past experiences were fine. But let's say I want to discuss about their future. How will you discuss? Their future billing. That means what is their customer base, what are their ongoing projects, and all that process. Along with that, very importantly, what I'll also think about is what is the human resource value? What is the value of human resource? When you are discussing about the value of human resource, let's say Infosys has 5,000 skilled labor, you know, skilled employees now who are at an age of so-and-so, who have an experience of so-and-so. So, these val the, a particular value will be assigned to them. Similarly, I have to compare it with one more software company, which has a similar number of, you know, or more number of human resource with less amount of experience. Now, what will be the value of that human resource? I'll start comparing these two. Because it is based on the human resource that a person starts earning income in this process. Any service industry you take, it is based on the human resource that they start earning revenue. Then, there becomes human resource kind of reporting very important. So, the reporting process here, where do I do? I am not supposed to do it in the financial statements. So, no p &L, no balance sheet, no cash flow statement, no notes to accounts. What else do I do? I'll start reporting in board of directors report. 
a board of directors will give you main, plenty such information like responsibility statements, yes, and other reporting like what is the energy saving techniques that they use and how much energy has been saved and what is the value of human resource, any waste management techniques that they have been employing. Lot of information is given in board of directors report which cannot be quantified in terms of money. Anything which we cannot do it as per money measurement concept will start reporting it under board of directors report if it is of significance to the users of financial statement. If it is of any significance to the user of financial statements, we'll place it under board of directors report. Well, we said money measurement not possible for a human resource. Then how do I value the human resource? Your valuation is based on love and squats model. Basically, two people who came up with a unique idea of valuing your human resource. Now, this is what we'll be looking at and how is this Levin Squatch model actually valued? In simple sense, I can say that Levin Squatch model uses discounted cash flow method. Now, what is the discounted cash flow method? Let's say Mr. X was appointed in a company. Mr. X age is about 25, let's say. On a reasonable expectation, I can say that this fellow will be in employment up to 60. Hail and healthy. Let's take till 60. And I'm saying that from 25 to 30 years, this fellow will be earning 5,000 rupees. Let's put a bigger value. Let's say 50,000 rupees. From 30 to 40, he'll be earning on average about 80,000. From 40 to 50 years of age, he'll start earning 1,50,000. And from 50 to 60, he'll start earning 2,50,000. Let's say these are per month is the earnings. How do I value this human resource today? X valuation of human resource today, I'll put it like this. 50,000 into 12 months. This is per annum pay. How many years is he getting this? 5 years up to 2030. So present value annuity factor, let's say the discount rate is 10%. Then how will I write 10 comma 5? 10% for 5 years. That is up to 30. Plus, after he is 30, he is moving into a different bracket, 80,000 into 12 months. When am I valuing? I am valuing it today. 10%, 30 to 40. Today is age is 25. When will he be 30? After 5 years. When will he be 40? After 15 years. So PVF, 5 to 15. Plus 1,50,000 into 12 months into PVAF. Come on guys, check. After 15 years, he'll be 40. For the up to 50, that means for the next 25 years, he'll be 50. So I'll write this as 15 to 25. Plus 2,50,000 into 12 months into present value annuity factor 10% from 35 to 25 to 35. The total of this will be the value of Mr. X. So that is a Mr. X value given as per 11 squats model. Now it doesn't mean that you can buy him worth that value. But basically his services in the organization can be defined by this value given here. Got it? Now how do I calculate that? PVAF R percentage M minus N. How will you do, how will you do this? M and N are two years. Then how will you find out this value? I'll do it like this. PVAF R percent comma N minus PVAF R percent comma M. That means if I have to calculate PVF 10% for 5 to 15 years, 
it should be PVF 10 to 15 minus PVF 10 to 5. Got it? So, this is what we will be using present value factors for identifying these values. Got it? Take down till here. It's a random example, guys. You won't have one employee in the organization, obviously. You'll have multiple employees at multiple uh, age, you know, their uh, ages. So we have to start calculating for each one of them.
Yes, guys, turn to the first question. From the following details, calculate as per Levin Squatch model the total value of the human resource for the group of skilled and unskilled labor. Average annual earnings of an employee till the age of retirement is 50,000 and 30,000. His retirement age is 62 and 65 and 62. Discount rate is 15%. Number of employees in the group are 20 and 25. Find out number of one employee, one employee value. You can multiply with the number. You will get the answer. Average age is 62 and 60. So let's start. Let's find out the value as per Levin Squatch model. Now, first I'm finding out for the skilled employee. Skilled employee. What is the average annual earning? 50,000. And his age of retirement is 65. Average age is 62. Three more years to go. How do you value? 50,000. Into three years, right? So P V A F fifteen percent for three years. Number of employees are twenty. This will give you the value of skilled employees. Unskilled employees thirty thousand into PVAF fifteen comma two years into number of employees twenty five. Identify individually what is skilled and what is un unskilled and the total value of employees is a total of both skilled plus unskilled. This guys, what is the PVF values? 15 comma 2, 15 comma 3 is 2 point some change.
1.625 multiply and get the values of skilled and unskilled. Yes, guys. So the total value is thirty five lakh two thousand five not seven. Turn to the second one. Following information regarding X Limited, calculate what is the total value of the human resource by following Levin Scott's model. The distribution of employees of X Limited is given to you. 30 to 39 years, 40 to 49 years, 50 to 54 years for unskilled, semi-skilled and skilled. So there are number and average earnings which are given to us. So we have to calculate the value. Guys, first what we'll try to do is, what are the PVAs that we need? Check. Let's talk about a 30 to 39 year fellow. First I need PVA for first 10 years. Then I need PVF of 20 to 10 to 20 years. Then I need PVF of 20 to 25 years. Think from a person who is 40 to 49 age. I need a PVF of first 10 years. Then I, I, I need a PVF of 10 to 15 years. Think from a last fellow 50 to 54 age. I need only one PVF that is 5 years. So let's try to identify the PVFs first. Let's get the PVFs into picture then we will think about it. PVAF 10 comma 5 PVAF 10 comma 10 Once again, discount factor is 15 guys Discount factor is 15, 15 comma 10 PVAF 15 percent 10 to 15 years PVF 15 percent 10 to 20 years PVF 15 percent 20 to 25 years these are the PVFs I need 10 to 15 means first find out 15 then find out 10 deduct it PVF of 15 comma 15 minus PVF of 10 to 10 sorry 15 to 10 PVF of 10 to 20 PVF 15 comma 20 minus PVA 15 comma 10 so 20 years PVA minus 10 years PVA identify those values first
check your PVF values guys these values will be used in computing the value of human resource of X limited in the given question yes so let's check value of human resource First, I am valuing unskilled. Under unskilled, first age group is 30 to 39 years. How will you calculate for 30 to 39 years? Average annual learning is 3000. I am calculating per employee, guys. I am calculating per employee. First, he is earning 3000 for 10 years. PVA 15 comma 10 plus after 10 years he will start earning 4000 for another 10 years PVA 15 comma 10 to 20 after that he will become 50 to 54 when he will start earning 5000 Value 5.0187 5 10 to 20 is 20 to 25 is 0.2048. Multiply with the values, you will get the value of one human resource with a As a age group of 40 to 49, he learned 4000 for 10 years. PVF 15, comma 10. Then he learned 5000 per annum 10 to 15 years. Someone with an age group of 50 to 54, 5000 into PVA 15 comma 5. That's it. Put your values here. You know the PVFs guys, you just have to multiply.
Yes, guys, give me the values 30 to 39. Multiply with the number of employees, you will get the totals. Then you will get the total of unskilled labor. Approximately 2124946. There is 100 rupees here and there is fine because you are taking PVFs, it is never in proper figure. A variation of 100 rupees is fine, guys, tolerable. Similarly, calculate for semi skilled. as well as for skilled similar way guys it's just the change in the values that's it someone between an age of 30 to 39 if he's semi skilled he earns 3500 pva 15 comma 10 then he'll start earning 5000 after 10 years up to 20 years 15 comma 10 to 20 finally he'll earn 6000 rupees up to 25 years
place the values. You will get the totals.
Guys, you can round off, guys, no problem. What is the total value of semi skill? Finally come to the skill. Thirty two thirty nine into PVF first ten years. Then he'll start earning six thousand from ten to twenty years. Then he'll start earning seven thousand. From 20 to 25 years. 33. 33. 970.7 it seems this total. Someone who is in the age group of 40 to 49. Will start earning 6000 for the first 10 years. And will start earning 7000 in the later 5 years. That is 10 to 15 years. Fifty to 54 age group. They will earn 7000 in the first 5 years and they will retire. Yes, guys, what is forty to forty nine? So my total value of human resource add everything unskilled two one two four nine five nine semi skilled one nine zero one nine seven four And finally, skill 1675-141. This total is 57. Fifty-seven two thousand some change. It's okay. A hundred rupees of a difference is fine.